Hey, this is Andrew from Redis, and today I want to give you a quick introduction to how to use Redis and Fast API together to build fully asynchronous web APIs that are smoking fast. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is our developer site. You can learn everything I'm about to show you here and a lot more uh, on our Fast API with Redis page. So you go to the developer page here and go down to Python and then go to Redis with Fast API. I've written up a whole tutorial that covers everything that you need to know about using Redis with Fast API. So check this page after this video if you want to go further. Okay, so what are the most important things you need to know about integrating Redis with your Fast API application? The first is which Redis client library to use. So to build a fully asynchronous API with Fast API and Redis, you want to use the AIO Redis library. That's the fully asynchronous Redis client library for Python. And we've just released a new version that is the same API as Redis Pi, except it's asynchronous. So in many ways, it'll be a drop-in replacement for Redis Pi for your async applications. Okay, so let's add AIO Redis to our example application. It's the is Bitcoin lit application. You can find setup instructions from that tutorial site that I just showed you. So let's assume you've cloned that, you have it checked out, and you just want to add this, this uh, library to your Fast API app. So we're using Poetry in this application. Poetry is really the best way to manage Python dependencies um, right now. So I'm going to go Poetry add AIO Redis. That's all you have to do with Poetry. It's going to install the latest version of AIO Redis, which is 2.0. Um, that's the version I just talked about that is, has the same API as Redis Pi. So once that's installed, now it's time to really get cranking with our code. Um, let me give you an introduction to my single file of doom in this example app, right? So here it is. It's got a bunch of helper code. And then at the near the bottom, it has two fast API endpoints, refresh and something called is Bitcoin lit. So this is an application that lets clients make a request to is Bitcoin lit and gets the last three hours of price and sentiment data. So it gives you a roll up of the average price and sentiment data for Bitcoin broken down by hour for the last three hours. That's the whole goal of the application, right? In order to do that, to be able to give clients that data, first, we need to suck in a bunch of data from Centicrypt, which is the API that we use to get sentiment and price data, put it in Redis time series, and then calculate a roll-up report, right? So we'll look at all these things, but effectively, you know, this is a simple app, it ingests some data, and then it gives you another picture of that data. In this case, it gives you hourly roll-up view of the data. So let's walk through these endpoints real quick and show you um, how to do Redis things with them. So in the refresh endpoint, uh, we are going to first get the data from Centicrypt. So this is gonna give us 24 hours of price and sentiment data. And this is what it looks like when we get it back. It's a JSON array of JSON objects and they contain price data, they contain sentiment data. Now these are actually averages and you can see it gives you a little bit of detail here um, in the count area, but these are 30 second averages of price and sentiment data. So we're already actually getting averages and we're going to average those to roll those up into hourly snapshots. So it's, we'll be giving customers, we'll be giving clients averages of averages. So if I mention averages of averages, that's why it's because the Centicrypt API is already giving us 30 second averages. Okay. But assume we have the data, um, we've used HTTPX to make an asynchronous web request to get it. Now we're going to persist it into Redis. Let's take a look at what that means in this context. So this application uses Redis time series as source available uh, Redis module to store data as time series. So effectively what we're going to do is we're going to look at that JSON array right, of data and we're going to break each of those JSON objects down and fork them out into two separate time series. On one hand, we're going to store them in a sentiment time series. So we're going to take the sentiment value from each of those JSON objects and we're going to store it as a sample in the sentiment time series. On the other, in the other forking path, we're going to store each, for each of those objects, we'll store the price as a sample in the price time series. So on the Redis side, we'll end up with two time series, one for price, one for sentiment. At this point, we've deserialized the JSON array and now it's a Python list of dictionaries. So we're going to go through here and we're going to pluck out the BTC price value and put it in uh, the time series with the price key. And we're gonna pluck out the mean value, we're gonna put it in the sentiment key. And looking at how that actually works 
under the covers, so to speak, we'll look at the add many to time series helper. So you can see here what we're going to do, we're going to rely on the Redis time series command ts.mAdd. That's going to let us accumulate a giant Redis command for each sample that we want to add. And this can go, be a cross time series. So it's going to be one Redis command and it will have both the price samples and the sentiment samples in the same command. So by the end of this, we can await this partial and we get, we execute a giant function or sorry, a giant Redis command with all these uh, pieces in it. I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. Okay. So we're going to cruise through this really fast. And if you want to slow down, you can do that. Just check the tutorial. So that's effectively our, our persistence, right? So we're going to persist the data from the Centigrade API into Redis as two time series. Once that's done, we're going to calculate a rollup. So we're going to calculate three hours of data. And what we want to end up with is buckets. We want to have a bucket for each hour in the last three hours, given a slice of time, right? A three hour slice of time. So, you know, if it's like three o'clock, four o'clock and five o'clock, we want to get back three o'clock, the average price for that hour and the average sentiment for that hour, four o'clock, the average price, the average sentiment for that hour. So let's see how we do that, right? So jumping in here into calculate three hours of data, we have some machinery that helps set up the query that we want to make for, you know, to Redis. And then we also have some machinery to create the, the uh, dictionary that we're going to end up persisting into Redis for just this piece of the data, just as a roll up, right? The important part for Redis from the perspective of Redis is how we actually get those hourly averages. So let's take a look at the get hourly average helper. So in here, we're calling the TS range time series command. So Redis time series command. So what we want to do, we don't want to have to do the averaging ourselves. So that would be expensive. So let's have the database do it, right? So let's call TS.range. We'll give it the time series key. So we're going to do this twice, right? We're going to do it once for the uh, price data and we're going to do it once for the sentiment data. Then we give it the start of the time series that we want to pull out start of the time window within the time series, let's say, and the end. And we can use the special character plus to say, start at a certain time and end at the very latest point in the time series on record. Then we're going to use aggregation to average the samples within that period within hourly buckets. So like I said, we want to get back buckets of hours. And for each hour, we want to have the average uh, for the time sample. Okay. So after we get the hourly buckets for the sentiment, you know, roll up and we get the hourly buckets for the price roll up, we want to combine them with zip. So we have a single thing and then we store that piece of data uh, in this dictionary, right? Okay. So what's the whole point, right? We want to calculate this roll up. The whole point of calculating the roll up is to cache it in Redis. So we've very quickly shown how to use a Redis module called Redis time series to store what we can consider the main data for the API. That's these uh, samples of price and sentiment data. Now we also want to use Redis itself as a cache because of course, just getting a string and setting a string from Redis is going to be faster than doing any kind of aggregation. So instead of having clients, you know, instead of having to calculate this report, every time a client requests, uh, make a request from our API, we want to occasionally, calculate the report, cache it, and then return from the cache as much as we can. So what we're seeing here is that after we do the refresh, after we add the data for the last 24 hours from the upstream API into Redis, then we calculate that report and we cache it. So we use the background tasks uh, feature from fast API. This is a way that we can effectively run this function to put this data in Redis after we've already returned the response. In this case, this is the refresh endpoint and clients don't really use this. We would use it internally. You can imagine us having a scheduler that runs this like Google Cloud Scheduler or GitHub Actions like on a cron job. <laughs> so it doesn't matter here. It will matter in a moment though. But effectively, you know, background tasks, if you haven't heard of this feature in Fast API, it's a really cool way to get, get around using something like Celery or RQ for pretty simple um, background tasks you might have. Here, it just does perfectly well at this task of adding stuff to this cache. 
Okay, we've gone so fast, but we already have the data in Redis that we're going to need uh, to serve these clients a report of data, right? So now let's take a look at the API endpoint that we actually use to do that. So clients are gonna hit slash is Bitcoin lit. And what they expect to get is a, a little report of the last three hours broken down into buckets, one per hour of averages of the price and time series, sorry, of the price and sentiment data for, for Bitcoin. All right, so it's all about caching now, right? So the first thing we're gonna do, we're going to see if the data that we need for this report is already in the cache. And if it's not, then we'll need to add it back in again, calculate it and add it. This is the same work that we did back here in the indexer. And you can think in the flow of time, what usually happens is, um, let's assume, you know, time has passed and the cache no longer has our report in there because caches usually need to evict data at some point or we have a TTL where we expire the data at some point. So let's assume that happened and we didn't get back anything from the cache. So we need to calculate it again. We've already looked at how we do the calculation. We do it with ts.range and Redis time series. Um, what about the actual function for setting the cache? right? Set cache. We didn't look at that because that's really sort of about caching. I want to talk all about caching right now. So let's look at how we actually set this cache value in Redis. This is a lower level approach to caching. You might be using a framework, a caching framework, and there are a number of these that exist for fast API, but you can always do it yourself and it's relatively straightforward to do. So this is how it works, right? We set a key, and we give it an expiration and then it goes away and that's pretty much it. So as you can see, we're going to uh, dump a dictionary of data to a string. So we'll serialize our dictionary of report data into a JSON string. And we'll use you know, the, the usual um, approach to if, if json.dumps finds a date time, it needs to convert it to a string. So use ISO format for that. That's a typical approach for doing this, uh, serializing date times. We use a dedicated cache key when we cache things in Redis. Here it is, very straightforward. And we set the expiration time for this cache key at two minutes. So every time we set the cache, we set an expiration time. Eventually that goes away and the cache, uh, you know, Redis blows away that key and that's totally okay. That's exactly how, as we would expect. So that's setting the cache. We did it in indexing. We also do it here if somebody comes through in the cache and doesn't have our cache report. But what happens if they do see the cache report, right? What, is, what happens to that? So we, let's say we ran this, we added the value to the cache, and then somebody makes a request immediately after we saved the cache, and now we have some data. So what do we do? We gotta pull it out. Let's take a look. So we use the same cache key, obviously that's gonna be important. And then um, after getting the value out, it's just a string, because Redis just m m mainly stores strings. So we store a binary string. Once we pull it out, we need to load it, or in other words, deserialize it from a JSON string to a Python data structure. It should be uh, a dictionary, right? So if we find any uh, date times in there. This is again, sort of standard machinery, right? If we find any date times in there, uh, we need to parse them back out from ISO format. So we use this little parser here. Uh, this is a little bit sketchy, but as you see, we, if we run into a string value that ends with the thing that ISO format strings usually end with and that we would have saved in there, which is the time zone offset, and we would have saved a UTC time zone offset, right? So if we see something that looks like a time string, we will use from ISO format, the Python 3.7 method to uh, load it into a date time object. This is pretty standard. There's lots of ways you can do this. Some are better than others and, and there you have it. So we've, we've parsed the data out at that point. We have a dictionary of data once we get the string and deserialize it from the cache. So we can just return that to the user. Okay, so lots of things going on here, right? So there's some cool things that you should look at like um, startup events, check the tutorial for this, but uh, we can make sure that the time series exists when the app starts up using the time series, using the uh, startup event. But I think we've looked at enough code, right? Why don't we actually uh, try to make this work? So first of all, we're gonna make sure the app is up. This app uses Docker Compose. So all we have to do is say Docker Compose up and it'll start the fast, fast API application. It'll start Redis. And then we can go over, uh, let's go to the Redis CLI and connect. 
So when we go to connect for a CLI, we need to give it a, a port. Now, usually it's 6379, but in this case, because we're in Docker, I have mapped 6379 in the container to 16379 on my local host. So now we're going to connect and we're going to run the monitor command. The monitor command just prints out all the commands that clients are running on the database. So we have the, the app is running. We're monitoring. Now let's do some, let's do some curl. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is we'll run the refresh to make sure there's data in Redis. So that has just pulled data from Centicrypt and added it to Redis time series. Uh, but how do I know that it has done it? Let's flip over to our monitor. So monitor outputted a bunch of stuff and you can already see that giant command that I mentioned earlier. Uh, this <laughs> exceeds the buffer, I guess, for a VS code. Uh, but what this is, is this is the giant ts.nad command. Um, it's going through and it's saying into this time series key, add this timestamp with this sample over and over again. Uh, and you can see that there's actually, it's doing just as we thought we expected. It's doing multiple time series keys, sentiment and price. So back and forth one, one after the other. Later on, we ask for the report, right? When we do the caching. And so here's the ts.range commands that run to generate that report. And then here's where we set the JSON string into a key. Okay, so I would expect now to be able to go over here and in my terminal, run the command to check if Bitcoin is lit, right? Is Bitcoin lit? Well, let's find out. All right, so we have the hourly average of averages. This is exactly what we expected to see. We wanted to get a breakdown of the price and sentiment averages per hour for the last three hours. Uh, you might immediately notice there's four hours. That's because it's a three hour window of time that might cut across multiple actual hours. So we will include samples from each hour within, you know, we'll bucket samples for each hour within a slice of time that is three hours. So that's what we have here. And we can see that sentiment is falling currently, but the price is rising. So that's interesting. And I would say that unless the price is rising and sentiment is rising together, it's not lit. So I'm going to say Bitcoin, it's not lit. That's, that's just isn't what I would expect to see, right? All right. Well, that was the API. That was a whirlwind tour of is Bitcoin lit? The example API that lets you find out if Bitcoin is lit or not. And you saw how we could integrate Redis using AIO Redis since we want to do async stuff with fast API and then uh, call it, use it as a cache, use it as the primary data store for this app by using uh, Redis time series, search time series data. So uh, I hope you learned something new. If you didn't, check Redis University. That's our free online course site. You can take a course about Redis and your programming language of choice or just Redis features. We have stuff on streams. We have a new scaling course up. So check that out. If you want to ask me questions about this or ask other Redis developers anything you want to learn about Redis, uh, join our Discord server where we have just real-time talk about Redis. And uh, you probably already know about the YouTube channel if you saw this video, but if you don't, there's a YouTube channel, a Redis YouTube channel, where we post all of our videos and video content. So come on back and learn something else about Redis. All right, see you soon.